you are about to enter the Shockwave Skull Sessions podcast on ShockwaveSkullSessions.com. And now your host, Bob Nalbandian. Song. That is something brand new from Doug Kinnick, the titled Perfect World. Great stuff. Check that out on Magna Carta Music. This is Shockwave Skull Sessions, podcast number four. And as usual, we got a great podcast for you guys. This time around, we got the legendary vocalist, bassist Doug Kinnick from King's X. And we've got Monty Colvin, who many of you may know from the band Galactic Cowboys. Monty has been a big fan of the Shockwave's Hard Radio podcast. That, of course, is my sister podcast on hardradio.com. As I said, Monty is a longtime fan of the Shockwave's Hard Radio podcast, as well as the Skull Sessions podcast series, and I've been promising him we'd get him on one of these shows and had the opportunity to interview the great Doug Pinnock, and I thought, what a great opportunity to uh, put these both together and make it a Shockwave Skull Sessions discussion. So this is more similar to the second podcast. It's not a debate, so to speak. It's more of a discussion about, I thought the Texas rock scene would be a cool uh, topic. Both Monty and Doug tell some great stories, particularly some great Pantera stories. So for those of you who are big Pantera and Dimebag fans, you're going to definitely want to stick around for some of these stories. So we're going to get right into it. But first, I want to give out my email because a lot of people have been trying to contact me. The email address is shockwavesskullsessions at gmail.com. You can also access the website for those that don't know. It is roadrunnerrecords.com slash skull sessions. Through that site, you should be able to access all the podcasts. You could download them and listen to them. And also, you could get the podcast through iTunes. So if you go to the iTunes store, you type in skull sessions. These shockwave skull sessions should pop right up. And by the time you hear this, we should have the podcast on a lot of the other major directories out there too. So uh, be sure to check it out and be sure to uh, add that feedback as well. All right. With that said, let's get right into this interview. This was conducted a three-way phone conversation in mid-May of this year. This is Doug Pinnock and Monty Colvin on the Shockwave Skull Sessions. We got Doug Pinnock from Houston, Texas. Doug, of course, from King's X. How you doing there, Doug? I'm doing great. All right, and we got Monty Colvin from uh, actually now living in uh, Kansas City. Yeah. How you doing there, Monty? Doing good, Bob. Pleasure yeah. and an honor to be on your show. Monty's a big fan of the uh, Shockwaves Hard Radio podcast. He always sends me really cool emails and stuff. And I said, one of these days, we're going to get you on this show, Monty. All right. Before we get started, just want to uh, let everyone know, King's X just put out a killer new record. It's out on uh, Inside Out SPV entitled 25. Is that right? With the Roman uh, X- numerals. X- Five, I guess it's 14, 15. See, that's how much I know. Yeah, the X, that's 15. All right. Me too. I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> okay, so 15. Is this your 15th record with King Tex? Something like that. Wow. We, we, we argued over if, if a, uh, a live and a, I mean, you know, we got a best of and two live records. So we just counted them all. Let everybody else sort it out. And, of course, you, you put out an amazing solo record on Magna Carta. That was just last year, right, entitled Strum Sum Up. Yeah, it's about, what, six months ago or something, I think. I can't remember. Great, great CD for fans of King's X. You'll love it. And people that aren't quite into King's X will still love it. It's not as uh, progressive. You just, you just go balls out on that CD. Great, great stuff. Monty's got a new band called Crunchy. And, of course, Monty was in... The band Galactic Cowboys, who, uh, of course, were real close with King's X, did a lot of shows together back in the day, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did, did a lot of Many a tour. Now, Wally Farkas was the other guitar player for King's X, right? No, Wally was for the Galactic Cowboys. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, for Galactic Cowboys. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, Wally was uh, the guitar player for uh, the Cowboys. 
like for the last four albums I did. I got gotcha. you. And then he, uh, he just played on Doug's solo album. Great stuff. And the uh, Crunchy record, is that on the store now? I know it's on Gas Fist Record. Yeah, it's uh, actually just through my website right now. You can get it at montycalvin.com. The new album is Loserville. That's right, man. Great stuff. And you play pretty much all the instruments and did the production on it. Yeah, I did, uh, did everything except the drums. Now, I want to kind of talk about a bit about Texas metal because it hasn't been talked about much uh, over the years. Of course, everyone's uh, focused on, you know, the big cities of L.A., New York, Seattle, the grunt scene there, the death metal scene in Florida, the Midwest, Detroit, Chicago, and whatnot. So uh, you guys are a long-time uh, Houston residents, right? Oh, I moved here in 85. Where were you previous? In Missouri, that's where I met Monty. Yeah, man, we've been friends, like, a long time. I met Doug uh, in Springfield, Missouri, and uh, we've been friends ever since. Yeah, they were they were like a four-piece cover band when I met them. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got to see them just blossom over the years and become what they are now. Was it all different members then, Doug, or do you have Ty? Same guys, except we had extra guitar players, but they both quit. Yeah. And you were doing the singing back then? Yeah, everybody makes me sing. It's like nobody wants to sing, and they say, you got to do it, so... Well, you got a hell of a voice, dude. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why, Doug. You're <laughs> great. <laughs> so I didn't know that. So you guys met there. Did you guys move out to Houston together? Uh, well, you came down what, pretty close after I did, didn't you? Yeah, you were there a couple years, I think, before me, and uh, I came down later and heard things were happening down there. So what attracted you guys to Houston? Well, we were all trying to just make it in a rock and roll band, you know, and there was a guy down here that brought us King's X down to Houston. To was that Sam Taylor? Uh, no, that was the record company, the mm. record that they was. And we played with Morgan Cryer, one of their uh, artists. We were the backup band. And then uh, I think after we left, the, uh, the guys from Glacky Cowboys basically became his band. And then from there, we all started getting record deals and doing our thing. Now, King's X, uh, I remember when Out of the uh, Silent Planet came out, uh, it was actually through Megaforce. Was that prior to their Atlantic deal, or was that about the same time? It was it, it was basically the same deal. Megaforce did two records with us, then Atlantic took it over. Basically, Megaforce was a subsidiary of Atlantic. And I think Faith of Love, uh, Atlantic bought us out from Megaforce, and then we became an Atlantic band for like four records. I got gotcha. you. Well, that, I remember when that album came out, and even when Gretchen goes to Nebraska, that was so unique for that time. How was it for a band that was as unique sounding as King Zek, especially during that era? I mean, we're talking like early 90s, right? Or was this late yeah. 80s even? Late 80s. This is late 80s. 80s, yeah, where, you know, everything was still kind of glam and still kind of that typical, uh, you know, L.A. sound, I guess you would say. How was it to branch out and, and to get a deal, especially with a, a New York-based label Megaforce, who, of course, were known for, you know, bands like Metallica and Anthrax and that kind of thing? Well, nobody. <laughs> we said that almost to every major record company in the world, I think, and everybody rejected it. And a friend of mine uh, who played with uh, Amy Grant, actually, in Nashville, uh, got uh, a hold of one of our demos, and he called me up and he said, what's up? And I gave him the same story, like, nobody cares. And he says, why don't you give this guy named Johnny Zazula a call at Megaforce? He might be interested. And so we did. And luckily, he liked the tape, and uh, they signed it. But that was, I mean, that was just pure luck. Now, at the time, were you were you guys making uh, headway out in Houston? Were you basically playing the club still or touring yeah, at all? We were playing clubs, doing cover tunes and some originals with Sam Taylor, our manager. Wow. But nothing was happening. It was like a dead end street. Now, Sam was famous for uh, uh, ZZ Top, right? He produced... Uh, no, he actually was the general manager of ZZ Top. Now, what about Galactic at this time, uh, Monty? You guys were uh, playing the clubs together pretty much with King's X in Houston? Um, well, actually, what happened with us is I was in a, a, another band called The Awful Truth, and we actually got that released on uh, Metal Blade. But we broke up right as things were starting to happen with that, and I started another band, Galactic Cowboys. And uh, we actually got a big break from King's X when uh, we got to open for them on a uh, East Coast tour. And we weren't even signed yet, but we started getting attention on that tour. And uh, before we were even off the tour, we started having some offers, things like that. And then uh, we ended up getting a deal with Geffen. Now, weren't, weren't you on Metal Blade first? No, we were, uh, we were actually on Geffen for uh, the first two albums. 
and then uh, the whole Nirvana thing hit, and uh, they ended up dropping it. Oh. And that, that's when, yeah. uh, that's when uh, Metal Blade came along and scooped us up. That's right, that's right. But you did do a previous record in a different band with Metal Blade then. Yeah, it was uh, called The Awful Truth, and they actually released our demos as, as a CD. That's a that's a classic uh, record, guys. You I gotta check that out. Is it still available on Metal Blade? I'm not even sure. I only have I, one copy myself. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they don't, but I've got a copy. I've got two copies actually. <laughs> cool. I, I I actually have have burned copies for people who, who probably never get a chance to hear because it's a great record. It's one of my favorite things you've ever done, Monty. It's, Everybody, it's, write to Metal very, Blade and get that album reissued. That's true, and it's very original too. If you want to hear something really different it's a great record all right now doug a lot of people don't know you were actually offered to join deep purple correct you actually auditioned as to be a vocalist for deep purple Mm, no oh it's amazing how rumors change well this was straight from blackmore's mouth well well actually what happened was i think he called our management up and asked if i would be interested in singing with them and i think sam might have told him my manager must have told him no because i never talked to ricky personally never met him uh, i got a chance to i was asked to play with uh, sing with kansas too a couple, couple years before that and mm-hmm. i turned that down just because i can't sing like steve Walsh. and i was happy with you know king's x we were called the edge at the time you know but yeah i mean it's nice to have people ask you to do those things but the bottom line is you want to do what you want to do you know i, sure. I, I never try to sit in there and front deep purple it's like ian gillen is like one of my heroes and this is no way you know <laughs> but it's flattering and it's honoring but you know who knows so you actually never met Blackmore then, huh? No, I'd love to. I've met uh, I've met a couple of other guys in the band who never reached Blackmore's like my hero, and I would just love to see him get out of that renaissance. I mean, for what he's doing, is cool, but the guy's got to get back into rock and roll. I mean, the guy was just the most prolific, you know, writer, and just, uh, I mean, I would love to see, like, what Ian Gillen did with Gillen's End, where he had a bunch of special guests. If Richie could do that and get someone like you to sing on a couple tracks, maybe get, you know, a, a Dio to do some stuff, a Paul Rogers or whatever, you know, people he's oh, been yeah, into. Yeah. And I mean, that would just be amazing. You should talk him into that, man. Well, if I, I don't know how to get a hold of him, but I would. <laughs> well, if you do, give me, give me his number. I'll call him up. I'll, I'll get okay. his. <laughs> well, if I get a hold of his number, his name, I'll tell him. <laughs> there you go. So let's talk about... Um, now, I know, of course, the, the big band, obviously, that everyone talked about from, from Texas, actually Dallas, is, is Pantera. A lot of people still don't realize that Pantera had a whole semi-career before uh, Cowboys from Hell came out. And they've been together probably uh, just as long or longer than you guys. I know since, like, the early 80s they were putting yeah, out records. Yeah. Did you guys go into Dallas and do shows with them a lot, or did they come up to Houston, or how did that work? They always came to Houston. I think they came at least once a month to play the back room or someplace in town. Yeah. And we would go out. We'd go to see every show. Remember, Monty? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was like, uh, we used to see them in this little place called the Backstage. Yeah. It was like the little metal club. And uh, we saw them before, you know, they, they hit it all. In fact, we saw them, I think, before they got signed. Oh, and, yeah, several uh, times. Yeah, we were just like, man, this is awesome, you know? And we, we'd go backstage and hang out with them and had no idea that, you know, like a year or two later they'd be playing the arena there. You know, yeah, that, uh, I, I remember the night we went to see them and they came out on stage and played Cowboys to Hell and didn't tell anybody they had a record deal or had a new record or anything. Because we were so used to hearing all their old power metal songs. They came out and did a whole record and then walked off the stage and we all wanted to go slit our wrists. <laughs> we thought, yeah. we thought, what do we do after this? It's like, where do you go? <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, you remember the night uh, that uh, they played, and we all went and saw them, and, and we ended up at your place after the show, and, and we're like hanging out with Dimebag and uh, Phil, and we like played them the uh, the first Galactic album, like before it had come out. Yeah, and uh, that was just like one of the coolest things. Back on. It was a like had, great night of my life. <laughs> cool. We've had some great times with those guys. Did you guys do shows together? Never did any shows with Pantera. No, nah, they were they were too heavy. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. <laughs> we couldn't fit on the bill with them, you know. It was just like they were another kind of heavy. People would have thought we were aliens if we had opened for them. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember in the early 80s, 
you know, I, I used to do an old fanzine called The Headbanger way back then, and they used to always write to me, and there was a band, uh, Hellstar, which you were also an old Metal Blade band uh, yeah. out of Texas, and there was a Texas Slayer, too, that used to write to me all pissed off because I was doing full-page ads with the L.A. Slayer before anyone knew who they were. And, of course, there was Watchtower with a Jason McMaster, who's gone on to, of course, you know, Dangerous Toys and Broken Teeth, who's been like a staple Texas, you know, metal guy for, for many years. So tell me about what, what other bands were out there and what was the, kind of the uh, scene like? Was it like kind of like a club scene that bands uh, all got together and played around? Or uh, I know Austin had quite a big club scene. Did, oh, what, do you, what do you think, Money? I thought that nothing was happening in Pretty much as far as I was concerned, it's like you had to go to Austin to hear anything, you know, so like nobody would even come here. I don't know. Oh, now, yeah, to be honest, there really, you know, there really wasn't that much happening in Houston. Really? But, yeah, you know, no, uh, no big scene, there's no place really people would hang out and, you know, and stuff like that. It, it, I hate to say this because I come from Houston, but for music, this is the worst place. And that's just the way it is. I've been all over the country, and this is one of the places where if you're looking for to go out and just stumble up on a great band, you ain't going to find it here. You need to go to Austin or L.A. or something, you know. Right, right. I and mean, I mean, I'm not saying there's no good bands here or nothing. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that the scene here is just so disjointed that you can't find them. And that's probably why so many bands here don't get out of here, you know, and, or, or if they don't make it until they get out of here because it's just nothing to push in here. Texas being so big, I mean, for you to go to, like, from Houston to Dallas to Austin to San Antonio, it's like from L.A. to San Francisco. I mean, you're, like, spread out, like, six hours apart from these cities. Uh, about, well, about four from Dallas and two from Austin and three from San Antonio. It, it's not that bad. And five from, uh, five and a half to New Orleans. So, I mean, we're, we're in a, a real nice little metropolis. I mean, if there's somebody playing, we can always take a road trip. But it seems like even a lot of big bands miss Houston, and they'll play all the other cities, but not us. Uh, it's kind of strange. Monty, let's let's get back to you. What's uh, what what happened with Galactic? You, you did one or two albums after Machine Fish, right? You know, I think we had a lot of uh, high expectations and hopes and everything in the in the beginning. The first two albums, like I said, were on Geffen. And, you know, they promised us that we were going to be the biggest band in the world. And sure. then uh, the Nirvana album came out uh, on that label by the guy that signed us, the same guy that signed them. And it just kind of all fell apart. I mean, people left the label that were there when we were signed. And so we kind of got, you know, put on the back burner and then dropped. You know, we put out four more albums on Metal Blade, and uh, we were actually together 10 years. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just at the end of 10 years, I just felt like, you know, uh, I gave it all I had, and, you know, it was time to maybe try some other things. So I uh, decided to quit and start a solo thing. And, but uh, there were, you know, we did some cool stuff that I'm really proud of. And, Definitely, man. Uh, you did some really, really good records. And what brought you back to Missouri, to Kansas City? I used uh, to live back here, and my family and my wife's family were back here. And so uh, we just thought it'd be, you know, kind of a nice change. That's what we did. How's the scene there compared to uh, to Houston? It's about the same. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you got more of a blues scene out there, huh? I guess that'd be yeah. more St. Louis. You know, it, it's kind of like there's a little bit of everything. It, it's kind of the same way. You know, a lot of bands will skip over Kansas City. <laughs> but it's okay, but there's not there's not a lot happening. So, Doug, what, what are your plans right now with King's X? I know you just put out the new record, great new record. Did you Who produced that album? Uh, it, Michael Wagner produced it. Oh, he did. All right. You record that in Nashville? Yeah, we did. And what's, uh, what's the plan for the band right now? Are you going on the road real soon? Or? Yeah, we're, go we're going out in August with Extreme. The original band got back together again. Right. And it's, and it's called Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Oh, I heard about that. That's right. It'll be cool. It's got a bunch of rock, old rock stars together to sort of round up some kind of so you want to be a rock star kind of deal, you know, with bands and people like that and contests. And the guy that's putting it, it it's a clear channel thing that's doing it. And the guy that did So You Want to Be a Rock Star that was on TV not too long ago is producing this show. And it's sort of, sort of semi-reality kind of contest thing. But anyway, all that's going to happen for two hours, uh, and the radio stations are putting it on and stuff. And then after they get done, then we go on and play, and then extreme plays. So it's, it's, it'll be good exposure. I don't think we're going to be in the TV show or the video or anything like that, but it's a great opportunity 
you get to play for a bunch of new people. All right. Now, is this going to be like a full tour? You're hitting all the major cities, or is it just going to yeah, be select? Yeah, yeah, yeah the major, well, the select major cities, it, it, it'll last a month. I think we're doing every major city. Now, of course, you know, we talked about your solo record, the uh, Strum Some Up. You've done quite a bit of projects, uh, Doug. You did, you know, of course, the Super Shine and Pound Hound. Um, you've got a lot of freedom with, with King's X to do a, a lot of different uh, experimental stuff. I know you've got your own home studio. Are you still planning on continuing that path and doing other uh, solo ventures? Oh, yeah, that's my, that's, that's my uh, side job. If I didn't do that, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to pay bills. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I do it because I love to do it. And, and, I, and luckily right now it seems like I have a lot of people that want to do things with me, so... You know, when that dries up, that'll change. But right now, I'm I'm on a roll, so I'll just keep on putting music out and tell I'm saturated everything. Everybody stick with me. But I, you know, just kind of it, it helps to pay the bills more than anything. You know, and and it's fun to work with other people, and and I will always probably do that because I love music and I love making music. So you know, I just can't be stuck in, with King's X. I gotta you know get out there and have fun with other people. Plus, for the fans, too, we get to hear, I mean, because a lot of the stuff is so different than, uh, you know, the stuff you've done uh, with King's S kind of shows another side of Doug Pinnock, which is really cool. Well, it, it's challenging, you know, that's the fun of it, it's like, hey, this is art, so, you know, luckily I get a chance to throw something, another monkey wrench into something, and, <laughs> you know, but... so many awesome players on, on your projects, Doug. Uh, I know Steve Stevens did a lot of stuff on your, your solo record. Uh, uh, you did Super Shine with you know, Bruce from Trouble. And who, who would be some of your dream guys, or who, who do you really want to work with? Well, I'll tell you a quick story. Don't have to hog anybody's time, but uh, I got to play on stage with the drummer and the trumpet and saxophone player for Flying at Elm Stone. And Flying at Elm Stone is my favorite band in the whole world. And Buddy Miles is probably my second favorite and he died not too long ago and they did a tribute show for him in Austin and I went up to, to be a part of it and they just wanted me to sing you know a couple tunes and I brought my bass just in case I, I normally don't do it but I brought it and found out that a couple bass players didn't show up like Billy Cox was supposed to show up and he didn't make it and so I got a chance to play and I played three or it was four songs flying up on these own songs with members of the band it's probably the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life. If you see pictures of it, and there's a glow coming out of it. <laughs> wow. Well, I know you're heavily into, and in fact, you incorporate a lot of funk stuff into your, your solo projects, and, and even a little bit into King's X here and there. Would you uh, consider doing a whole other project that would just be more of a, you know, old-style, you know, funk R&B band? Yeah, I'm trying to piece that together now. Right on. Of, I'm looking for a few people that are just, some soul brothers around the area that I've been talking to for a couple of years, and it'll be you know it'll be like an all black kind of heavy funk band, you know, just gonna try give that one try for a few seconds. All right. So what about you, Monty? You guys, are you thinking about forming a band around Crunchy, getting some players and going out on the road with it? Great stuff, by the way. Definitely uh, after you listen to this interview, go to a site and order the uh, record. Just some really, really catchy, strong tunes on that, man. Both of them. Yeah, I actually uh, have a band that uh, plays with me live. So, yeah, we, we get out and play and, and uh, have a blast. You know, I don't have any tour plans right now, but, you know, I'd love to. <laughs> well, what about you guys? You guys going to do some jamming together, the two of you, like you the know, old days? It's, it's, <laughs> always, it's always down the road. I just wish you didn't live so far away. Yeah, I may move back, Doug. <laughs> you know, everybody's down here, and we miss you, and we love you. Wally's, Wally's down the street, and I'm here, and we could all be doing stuff and have fun. Yeah, I may have to do that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, any other good Texas stories regarding, you know, Pantera or any other bands you guys played with that you want to share? I just remember, uh, like, them being really nice guys, you know, before they were signed, after they were signed, you know, especially Dimebag was just always the coolest guy. And even before they were signed, he, he had quite a reputation. I mean, everyone knew who he was and, you know, everyone from, you know, guys in Metallica, Megadeth, I mean, all the bands, you know, were yeah. familiar with him. And I remember one night we went backstage and, and we were hanging out with him and, of course, they were still new to us, which is like... Man, dude, your sound is so amazing. You know, how do you get that sound? And he was like, well, dude, I use a Furman Power Amp. And a, you know, and he just went into, the, like, the whole list of, like, all of his stuff. <laughs> it was like, 
told us all of his equipment and all of his secrets. So he was just a, a cool guy. Yeah, he. Uh, I remember uh, at Christmas, I went up to uh, one of his Christmas parties, Christmas Eve, and he, Don would buy presents for everybody in the, and when he lived with his mom. <laughs> And uh, he used to uh, buy presents, and they'd pile them all up to the ceiling. There'd be so many of them. And he'd have all his friends come over, and he could walk through the house and be a pathway because there'd be so many presents. So what John Beck got me for Christmas, he knew I was a health fanatic, and he always used to ask me about how to keep yourself fit and stuff, because he drank a lot, and he was always asking me questions about, you know, how to detoxify himself and stuff. So he didn't know what to get me for Christmas, so he went out and bought me a big box of uh, uh, carrots because he knew I'd keep a lot of carrots. But he bought them like two weeks earlier, and he put them in the garage. <laughs> and so I was leaving, and he said, Doug, I got the present in the garage. He said, I hope you don't mind, but I know what else to get you. So we went out, and we went and got them, and then we put them in my the back seat of or, uh, the trunk of my car. And I was driving home, and uh, when I got home, I opened them up, and they were all molded and stuff. <laughs> that was great. Time always meant well, though. Uh, I think everybody's got two or three or four dime stories, you know. So, Monty, how could the uh, fans uh, contact you? Well, I'm on MySpace, uh, myspace.com slash Monty Colvin, M-O-N-T-Y-C-O-L-V-I-N, and I also have MontyColvin.com. All right, and they could order the uh, CD, Loserville by Crunchy, on your uh, website? Yeah, yeah, and there's also a Crunchy MySpace site, too. I think it's uh, Crunchy Rock MySpace, so, yeah, um... Drop me a line, and yeah, where's the CD? Right on. Could they get it at Amazon or no, iTunes? not yet. I'm kind of slow at that kind of stuff. And of course, this brand new King's X record on SPV Records, SPV, actually Inside Out SPV, I should say. And that should be in the stores. Uh, is it in the stores already, Doug? Uh, the 20th. The 20th. I like the way you do the side one, side two. You kind of uh, bring it back to the old vinyl. We're putting the vinyl out with a uh, uh, seven-inch SPV. Oh, you are? Awesome. Of, of, of the uh, bonus track. But for, for a CD, it's just 14 songs. Well, Cord, of course, your solo record, Strum Sum Up, that's available on Magna Carta. You should be able to find that at all the stores. That is available now. Uh, great, great CD. If you're looking for something different uh, from Doug, I mean, definitely uh, check that one out. Got a lot of great special guests on that. And if you want to read reviews on either of those, you could go to my uh, Shockwaves Hard Radio site on hardradio.com. Click the Shockwaves page on the last CD reviews. And uh, anything else, guys, you want to add? Oh, and it's my, my space. Is, oh, that's uh, right. Uh, okay. Calm down, but all you gotta do is just look up the UG Doug Pinnock, P I N N I C K, in, in MySpace, and you'll find me. Then I've got DougPinnock.com, which you, you can find out what's going on, which is not a whole lot. And then we've got King's X Rocks, King'sXRocks.com, if you want to find out what's going on with King's X and King's X MySpace. So that's it, I think. Yeah, so the tour's gonna start when, Doug? July 28th, I think. I'm not sure. All right, well, check out, there should be dates on your site, right, on the King's X site, kingsxrocks.com. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can find all the information there. Right on, man. So uh, definitely check that out. And Monty, check out his latest solo record, Crunchy. Thanks again, guys. It was a pleasure, man. You're welcome. Good talking to you, Monty. Yeah, you too, Doug. Thanks so much, Bob. Thank you for listening to the Shockwave Skull Sessions podcast. Subscribe and listen to all episodes by going to our pages on iTunes, Spreaker, YouTube, Spotify, and more. You can listen to all other episodes and access up-to-date information and news on the Shockwave Skull Sessions podcast by going to our website at www.shockwaveskullsessions.com. Email all comments, questions, and suggestions to shockwaveskullsessions at gmail.com.